In this video, I'm going to show you five Webflow tools that will save you a lot of time and improve the quality of your websites. The first tool that I would like to show you is the tool called easing.webflow.io. This is a tool where you have a list of all the different Webflow easing modes. As you may know, whenever you create a Webflow animation, you have to choose an easing mode. So this is the easing mode right here. And there are lots of different easing modes. However, most people don't know what all of these different easing modes do. So they just opt for the default ones. This is okay, but what you have to understand is all of these different easing modes can give your animations a completely different look, feel, and characteristic. So with this tool right here, easing.webflow.io, you no longer have to guess how the different easing modes look like, but you can just go to this page and see for yourself and based on this page, you can make a decision which easing mode fits best to your style and to your design and can then choose it and implement it. The second tool that I want to show you is a Chrome extension called TextBlaze. It is this one right here. And this is basically a snippet expansion tool, which means you define shortcuts. And based on these shortcuts, you can generate a predefined snippet. Let's take a quick look at this. For example, um, I have a shortcut called slash lorem 20. And whenever I type this shortcut, it automatically generates 20 words of lorem ipsum text for me, which is super useful because I use that all the time. Uh, or I have another snippet uh, if I want to add custom CSS to a page. Let's go to the custom code section. Instead of me having to type out the style tags all the time, I have defined a snippet called slash CSST. When I type that out, it automatically generates these style tags for me. Let's quickly go to the dashboard of TextBlaze. Okay, so this is the dashboard of TextBlaze. These are all of my commands that I personally use inside of Webflow, and I'm still on the free plan, so I don't pay anything for that. The way you would define a new command is, let's take a look at this one, for example. First of all, you give it a name, then you define a shortcut, and then you create the text snippet that should be inserted whenever you type the shortcut somewhere on the page. The interesting thing about this tool is that it only saves you a few seconds every time you use it, but because you use it so often, this quickly adds up and becomes a huge time saver. So definitely check this one out as well. I'll put a link to that and all of the other tools in the video description. And that leads us to tool number three, which is the tool that has saved me personally by far the most amount of time. The tool is called Reloom Library. It is a premium tool, which means you have to pay to get access to it. And the Reloom Library is a collection of over 1000 Webflow components and building blocks. It comes with a Chrome extension, which is this one right here. And then you can click on Reloom Library. And here you have all of these different component categories. So you have nav bars, footers, hero sections, feature sections, call to actions, context sections, pricing tables, FAQ sections. So basically everything that you need to build a great and complete website. So let's quickly take a look how I personally use this in practice. I have created a completely empty page right here. And the way I would start out building a project with Reloom is I would go to this um, Reloom library and then let's start with a nav bar. So here's the nav bars category. And here you have a list of all of the different nav bar components. You can hover over the individual components to see a preview. And whenever you like a component, I think I'm going to go with this first one. Whenever you like a component, you can just click on copy and then go to the navigator and just paste it onto the page. And there you have the navbar component. Let's do this a second time. Uh, and this time I'm not going to use one of these categories or one of these links. I'm just going to search for hero section because that's the component I want to insert next. And now I get a list of all of the available hero sections. Let's take a look at these. I think I'm going to go with this one. So I copy it, go to the navigator again and paste it onto the page. And boom, there you have the hero section as well. 
And the best part about the Reloom library, in my personal opinion, is that as you can see, all of these components are completely unstyled, which means uh, the layout is complete. So the layout is really nice and they, they are also responsive. So you don't have to worry about that, but you have to add your own styling. You have to add your own typography. You have to add your own colors, your own images, your own spacing system. And that is great because this way, whenever you create a website with the Reloom library, every website looks unique because the components are unstyled and nobody can tell that you used a component library for building the website. And in my opinion, that is just a great middle ground between using a ready-made template and building a website completely from scratch. I'm a huge fan of this Reloom library. It saves me lots of time. And if that's also interesting to you and you want to save a little bit of money on your Reloom library subscription, then feel free to use my affiliate link, mikepecha.com slash Reloom. When you go to that link, you can then type in the coupon code Pecha10, and this will save you 10% on your Reloom library subscription. Okay, and that leads us to the next tool which I want to show you. And this is a tool that has something to do with Google Fonts. So let's quickly navigate to the site settings. And in here, I want to open the Fonts tab. And here is where we can use Google Fonts. Now, a lot of people, including me, use Google Fonts on a regular basis. However, if you use this default integration, this default Google font integration from Webflow, this has some issues because if you use this, then whenever someone visits your website, the font files are loaded from the Google servers, which means you have a slight, uh, slightly negative impact on loading speeds. But the far bigger problem is that this is not GDPR compliant. Actually, quite recently, Webflow has added this warning about the GDPR issues right here. Fortunately, there is a tool which fixes all of these issues. The tool is called Google Web Font Helper. It has this weird URL right here, which I'll also put in the video description. And the way you use it is you type out the name of a font that you want to use. Let's say I want to use the Poppins Google font. Then you select it. And then you have to walk through all of these steps. So first of all, select the char set. Usually this is going to be Latin. Then in step number two, you have to choose the font weights that you need. In my case, I'm going to go with regular. I'm going to go with uh, semi-bold, which is 600, and bold, which is 700. Step number three, you can skip. And in step number four, you can just download all of the font files. Once you downloaded the files, you have access to this folder. And in this folder, you have your font files with the different font weights. And as you can see, you have access to lots of different file formats. The most important ones are the WAF and WAF2 formats. These are two formats that are highly optimized for the web. They are super small, which means they load really fast. And the way you can use them is, let's quickly go back to Webflow. You don't use them with this Google Fonts integration, but instead you upload the fonts as custom fonts. So you click on upload and then you can select your WAF files. So I'm going to select all of the WAF files and then click on upload. Then it uploads the font and you can do some configuration here. Usually I rename them so uh, it goes back to the default name. Then you have to configure the weights. So based on the font file, here it says 600, which means here you have to select 600 as well. This one is the regular font file, which means I keep it at 400. This one is the 700, which means I set it to 700. And then you can click upload and upload all of these files. This way you are now self-hosting the Google fonts. And because of that, they are GDPR compliant. You are no longer loading them from the Google servers. And on top of that, you get a slight uh, positive effect on your loading speed and thus SEO. Tool number five that I want to show you is a tool that in my opinion is a must have for every Webflow developer. And the tool is the FinSuite Chrome extension. Once you've installed that, you can find it right here. Lots of people already have this extension installed, but they don't use the full potential of it. 
So I'm quickly going to show you how I personally use it and maybe you can get some inspiration from that. For those of you that don't know this tool yet, this fin FinSuite Chrome extension, it is a collection of lots of different mini tools that you can use and they will make your life as a Webflow developer much easier. The most important sections are this candy section and this client first section. This client first section has a set of tools that are relevant if you work with the client first style system. And the candy section has some general purpose tools. One that I use for every Webflow project is this color swatches reorder. Um, and it does exactly what it says. You can reorder your color swatches so that they are in a, in a correct order, which makes sense visually. So let's quick, quickly do that. Reorder all of the color swatches so they are in a nice order. And then you can click on save. And once the page has reloaded, uh, we can go to the style panel, click on color, and you can see now the color swatches are in this nice visual order. This looks much better and is also much easier to work with. Another tool that I use like 10 times per day is this custom code tool right here. With this tool, you can add global custom code, which means the code you add here is applied to every page in your Webflow project. Now, usually the way you would have to do this is you would have to click on this menu up here then you have to go to site settings and then go to the custom code settings in your project settings. But with this candy tool, uh, custom code, you can do that straight from within the designer, which is great and will save you a lot of time. This is especially useful if you have to add some analytics script, site-wide analytics script or some global CSS. That's my most common use case for this. Another tool that I use quite often is the Unbind, Unbind CMS tool. This has saved me a lot of time. The vertical canvas resizing is super useful if you have a large screen and want to change the, the sizing of it. I cannot show you every single one of these tools today. However, my recommendation to you is that maybe after watching this video or this evening, take yourself 20 to 30 minutes and walk through every single one of these tools and try to understand what it does. And when you do that, then I promise you, you will find a use case for most of these tools in your next Webflow project, which will save you a lot of time and will also make your life a lot easier. And speaking of saving time, I have recorded another video called Webflow Productivity Tips, which you can find right here, where I literally teach you how to cut your Webflow development time in half. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check out this video. You can watch it here on YouTube and uh, it's definitely going to help you a lot. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. My name is Mike. Bye.